You've been listening to the music of the Dizzy Gillespie Quintet, Dizzy Gillespie Trumpet, Leo Wright Alto Saxophone, Lalo Schifrin Piano, Bob Cunningham Bass, and Chuck Lampkin Drums. I'm Ralph Gleason, and we're going to talk now to Dizzy Gillespie and find out a little bit, if we can, about his music and about modern jazz. I don't know what you're going to find out from me or not, Ralph. <laughs> well, we're going to try, Dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, I noticed that you began by playing a tune uh, called Norm's Norm. And this uh, brings up a subject that I've noticed recently with jazz groups that more and more modern jazz musicians are using for their repertoire and concerts and in clubs original jazz compositions rather than pop tunes and things. Do you find this true in your? Yes, it is. Well, for one thing is uh, uh, the more that you play one of your own original tunes on, on the air, uh, um, you know, radio or television, when the royalties come in, you get more money for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing, uh, uh, we have a lot of, we have quite a number of prolific composers uh, in the jazz field who feel that uh, they can do better with their, with their own original compositions, uh, a, la, a la Ellington. Mm -hmm. See, every time that Duke goes on the air, I notice there's two or three of his own original tunes in there. So they, it is specifically for the band that you have. Uh, uh, sometimes, though, you, you ch change musicians in a band, mm -hmm. and you don't have that same instrument there, and, and that number goes down the yeah. drain. You never play somebody come and say, play, play uh, Constantinople, maybe. Yeah. Um, well, maybe the guy that you had in mind, you know, the, the, is someplace else then, and then you don't have an arrangement on it. It's, it's like that. Is it, is it um, easier for you or more fun or more inspirational to play uh, original jazz compositions rather than pop tunes? Well, not necessarily. It's according to your own uh, uh, individual psychological makeup, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. at, the, at the time that you want to play. Uh, but the musicians in the band now, uh, they are governed by what the leader calls, yeah. so they have to go along with, with the program, with the tunes that he calls. But most of the time I ask the musicians, mm -hmm. how do you feel about so-and-so and so-and-so? Mm -hmm. uh, well, some people have said yeah. in, uh, in recent years that modern jazz has gotten away from its roots in the blues and uh, developed into other things. Do you find this to be true at all? Not the modern jazz that we are expose. Uh -huh. <laughs> Maybe they have some new modern jazz out now. I'm going uh, to uh, debate that point. Maybe there might be some new uh, modern jazz out uh, that might get too far away from the, uh, the roots. But not with but, you. But not with, no, no. If it is, I, I'm una unaware of it. <laughs> is there any difference in the, in the blues uh, that you play now and the blues say, when you were coming up in the swing era? Well, we put, we substitute a little more chord structure. And another thing, I noticed where the guys writing blues now, they write uh, 12 bars, uh, but it's not really the blues. Mm -hmm. uh, they use blues changes that you can, when they get into, they, they use a four, 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 you know, the same thing. They base but, melodies on the blues structure. Then, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they change, uh, they change the chord structure around, and then, but the blues is the blues, I, I, I really believe, because in the first place, the, the, uh, I hear some blues singers like Cousin Joe. Yeah. Well, he has some blues that, that, is, that are really down-home blues. It doesn't have to have 12 bars, you see. Yeah. It's got another thing going there, not yeah. uh, the dominance and things. They got something else going there for them. I like those blues, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Personally, but we have, we're not getting away from that. I don't think. Do you think it ever will? I hope not, because if they lose that boy, they're in trouble, <laughs> world of trouble. <laughs> because you don't have anything to hold on to. Is it is it different today in concept and in execution? Is the soloist different today and the way in which he works than he did in the swing era? Well, I think uh, the the soloist nowadays is a little more versed in the and harmonies uh, because of the fact that uh, maybe most of the soloists now play piano alongside that, uh, along with their individual instrument, seeing which helps to broaden the scope harmonically. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it was a time when I, was, uh, when I first started out, there were only three or four guys that, that could play the piano that didn't play the piano yeah. professionally. Yeah. See, so they didn't have that scope uh, that the modern musician 
has now. Well, what What's does playing the piano bring to the, the well, trumpet bring, solo? You, well, a trumpet solo, well, you can see all of the notes as you play them uh, at, on a piano. If mm -hmm. you play strictly a uh, concert from the piano uh, on your instrument, well, you can see the notes as you play them. But uh, a guy who's playing strictly from the instrument, from the from the trumpet, he only sees one line of notes going, uh, which is the trumpet mm -hmm. only play one 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 note, uh, one note at a time. Mm -hmm. But the but uh, if if you have a concept of the piano, you can see all of these things, and, and it gives, broadens really broadens your scope. This also helps you become a, an arranger too, I would imagine, for your own. That helps that too, yes. And this this makes your whole uh, concept of soloing. Uh, gives you much more diversification and That's opens right. up new things yes. for you to do? Yes, you won't have to... It's, uh, if you hear somebody play something and you want to use that, well, you don't have to use exactly what he, what he did. Mm -hmm. If you know what he's doing, if mm -hmm. you can see the way it is, you don't even have to do, do it the same way he does it. You're using it just the same, but it, it's, it's, you're doing this to it. It lays the whole structure bare for yes. you so yes. that you can work on it. Well, I think that's a very interesting point. Diz, I wonder if we could hear some of the tunes now that you discussed uh, before we started the show. And if my recollection is correct, you suggested that you would begin with Blues After Dark by Benny Golson. Yes. And then, well, just slip that off as you walk off. That's right good. over you. Yeah. Blues After Dark by Benny Golson. And then Lorraine, which is a composition that uh, Dizzy wrote himself. And then an excerpt from a suite called Gillespiana, which was written by Dizzy's pianist Lalo Schifrin. And this excerpt is uh, called The Toccata. This is the Dizzy Gillespie Quintet with Dizzy Gillespie on trumpet, Leo Wright on flute and alto saxophone, Lalo Schifrin on piano, Bob Cunningham on bass, and Chuck Lampkin on drums.
We've been having a very pleasant and instructive session with Dizzy Gillespie. Both by example and by explanation, he has certainly shown me things about jazz that I never knew, as I hope he has also illustrated some things for you. This is another one of our jazz casual series in which we are presenting some of the best examples of contemporary American jazz, and I hope that we present them in a fashion that meets with your approval. Now that we have a few moments left, let us go back to the Dizzy Gillespie Quintet for some more of the excellent Dizzy Gillespie jazz. <laughs> 